morning, everybody. Thank you for your patience as I get some of my screen set here. Okay, we will get started here in just a second. Okay, so welcome. Uh, thanks for logging in wherever you are this morning and joining us for new student orientation. Um, you may have just seen on the screen, you will have to um, acknowledge that we are recording today's session, which means that you will get a recording of this session at the end of the week. Um, so if you have questions or want to review any content, you will receive a recording of this message, message um, of this webinar. I also wanted to remind you, and I said this before, if you joined us in the looping PowerPoints, but this is a Zoom webinar. So hopefully you are well aware by now, but webinars mean um, you are by default muted with no video display. So we won't be able to see you. We won't be able to call on you. So please do not use that raise hand feature. We cannot call on you during today's presentation. We'll talk more in a few minutes about how to contact us if you need us during today's presentation. Um, but also I wanted to make sure if you are only joining by phone this morning, then please at some point today or this week, email us at orientation at osu.edu and let us know the phone number you use to call in today. Um, that will help us track participation and, um, know who attended. So, um, my name is Dee Dee Cruz. I am part of our first year experience team here at Ohio State. Um, FYE is an office that helps students make the transition to the university. So we coordinate this orientation program that you're joining today, knowing that all of you are joining from different parts of the U.S., but also in different um, parts of your experience in higher ed. So whether you are a new freshman student that is joining in the spring, a new first year student, or a transfer student from another institution, um, we are all excited that you will be here as new Buckeyes. Um, so I'll pause here. There will be some polls throughout today's presentation um, just to get your input and help keep you engaged. Um, so I will launch our first poll question now. Um, before we head too much into today's content, I want to know where you are on your academic journey. Um, so like I said, I know you are joining from all over the place. Um, is this the first university or college you're attending, second university or college, third, three or more institutions? Or are you attending for a reason other than a bachelor's degree? So hopefully you can see the poll on your screen and please participate um, and we will keep moving along. Awesome. Okay, great. So this is kind of to help you understand that again, wherever you are in your journey, you are not joining in here alone. We have majority of students, this is your second university, but we also have a fair amount of students that this is your first university or third or more. Um, so again, welcome. I'm glad that you're here and Ohio State is, is part of that for you. Okay. Um, let me check. Not sure. We do have um, some FYE folks behind the scenes today, but also if you are joining and you are military or veteran affiliated, I'll pause this for just a second so you can take a picture of the screen or screen share. If you have any questions about using your benefits or how your service um, plays into your education here at Ohio State, these are the folks that you'll want to contact, um, specifically Mike Forrest. So keep his um, information. His email is Forrest, F-O-R-R-E-S-T, dot seven three at OSU dot edu. And Shiloh is here too, I think, to make an announcement. I'm not seeing her on the on the panelist. So she um, I think is in the chat. So if you have any questions, she'll be able to answer in the chat. So if you are military and um, veteran affiliated and you have questions, like I said, you can keep this information and reach out to Mike or Sh Shiloh will be able to answer any questions in the chat, okay? We'll talk more about that in a second in case you're not familiar with that. Um, okay, so three highlights of today's orientation session. Um, so you'll have gotten this in the email that I sent before today's session, but there uh, we'll go over the introduction to Ohio State. Um, and again, this is in the outline of the email I sent this morning too. If you're, if you're looking for something to help you follow along or like a visual aid, um, for those of you joining on by phone, then this is in your email. 
So we'll be together today until about 11.15 Eastern time. Like I said, we'll do an introduction to Ohio State. We'll talk through some of the resources. We'll hear from some of our campus partners who will provide um, really great resources as you transition into Ohio State. That includes transportation and traffic management who will cover details related to parking, our on-campus bus service, biking on campus, and other transportation related details. Off-campus and commuter student engagement who will discuss off-campus living and commuter resources and a representative from our Office of Student Life who will cover things like the Buck ID card. So we always get questions about the Buck ID card. You will get information. You do have to hang out till the end of the session today. Um, so you will get that information. And then lastly, we always get questions about academic advising, right? So you will um, at some point this week work with your academic advisor in your area of study. So from your college to schedule for classes for the spring. Some of you have that appointment as early as 1115 today. And I'm going to go ahead and launch a second poll here to kind of figure out where you are with hearing about that um, appointment. So let it, let's see. So have you heard from your academic advisor? You'll see that poll pop up on the screen. Do you know the details, how you're going to connect with that advising appointment? If you are answering no, that is okay. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, this is just so we can kind of see where you are um, with your academic advising appointment this week. Okay, thank you all. That was like 92%. Also, there's some kind of like work going on in the hallway. So sorry if you can hear that. Okay, so um, there's still a good handful of folks that are not sure how to access that advising appointment. So let me just remind you, we had it in the looping slides before the presentation began. But if you do not have that information, um, remember that your academic advisors would have been emailing you at your Ohio State email account. So that is your last name dot number. So I'm cruise.375, right? Um, at buckeyemail.osu.edu or at osu.edu. So you need to check your Ohio State account then you need to check your spam and make sure it didn't end up in there for some reason. Um, you're looking for an email that's talking about enrollment, um, academic advising, scheduling for classes, and things like that. So again, if you have checked those folders and you still cannot find that information, then email orientation at osu.edu. Um, like I said, we have some first year experience staff working the chat and the Q&A and also checking that email today to make sure that you're connected um, to an academic advisor. So I've mentioned chat a few times, so hopefully you're familiar with this at this point, um, but use the chat feature today for any kind of tech issues, individual questions, questions that um, you're disclosing personal information or we would need to ask personal information um, of you, that is for the chat. For the Q&A, that's gonna be kind of our topical question. So after our presenter, if you have questions based off of what they, they spoke about, again, the non-personal questions, something that would apply to a majority of the audience. Um, so that's how we want you to use those two features today. Also, if you're asking questions that you could easily just like Google, that's gonna be a faster way um, than our, our small team here during today's orientation. So um, just for reference, check those out and please do reach out if you need anything. And before we leave today, I'll make sure that you're connected with me um, and have some information on how to follow up with a staff member if you need that. So speaking of orientation today, um, there's a lot of time between now and January, and we recognize that. We know that you're going to get a lot of information today, but you might have questions kind of as um, the new semester approaches. So I would encourage you to check out um, u.osu.edu slash transfer. And I know we have some new students here. Please know that all this information is also relevant for you. Um, so feel free to check that out. And there's a new student orientation tab, and I would really suggest that you go through those items. Um, some of that will be, have you gotten familiar with Carmen? So maybe you've had like a, a similar experience with Blackboard, but really helping you make sure you take care of those transition items so that you're successful when classes begin in the spring. We also um, have like our student portal called Buckeye Link, and I'll talk more about Buckeye Link here shortly, um, but you need to make sure you don't have any outstanding to-do um, items that could potentially impact your registration or impact the start of your semester. So make sure you are staying up to date in buckeyelink.osu.edu. 
please check it even first week of classes, the week after classes begin. Sometimes those to-do items are applied at different points in the semester. So stay on top of that. Okay. And then again, so these are um, some really great things to check out. Again, as the semester gets closer, these um, are all like video tutorials. So if you're somebody that really wants to see step-by-step -step or you watch it on the screen, pause it and do it yourself, these are great items. These are a lot of questions we get from new students. So um, how do I view my statement of account? How do I add a class? Which you'll do with your academic advisors, but you will need to know moving forward. Um, how do I enroll in a, in a payment plan? How do I make a payment to my account? Um, so again, these are all really great video tutorials on go.osu.edu slash orientation videos. Another resource that's helpful, I really, I'm not an app person, but this is a great one, um, the Ohio State app, and this is for the university, not athletic. So this is the one um, with the gray background in the block O. Um, this will have a profile that is specific to you. So it'll have your grades, it'll have your buck ID balance, um, any kind of like news that are relevant for that point in the semester and even links to transportation and class, um, a map of campus. So again, this is a really great thing to have in your pocket that you can pull up as you're on campus or have questions about things. Um, we have this slide in the um, PowerPoint before we started as well. If you wanna take a screenshot of this, these are all upcoming dates and deadlines relevant to the spring semester. It's all found on the registrar's website. So registrar.osu.edu. Um, but I walk, I want to walk you through just like a few important things that again might be specific to Ohio State. So typically every semester, the fee payment deadline is about one week prior to the first day of classes. So in the spring, classes are expected to begin Monday, January 8th. So it would be due the prior Monday, but we're actually closed that day for the New Year holiday. So fees are due on Tuesday, January 2nd. That's the date that they'll be due in your account. That is also the deadline to select or waive out of student health insurance. So remember, if you were enrolled in six or more credit hours as half-time status to full-time status as a student, you are required to carry out some sort of health insurance, and you will automatically be, be billed for student health insurance if you do not opt out by the second. So it's important that you pay attention to that deadline, or you will see a, a hefty student ins health insurance um, charge. And if you already have insurance from your parents or from an employer, then you don't want to be billed for that. So you have until the second to provide the proof that you already have insurance or to go ahead and choose a student insurance plan. That is one of the tutorials I just mentioned on that go.osu.edu slash orientation videos. So again, check out those video tutorials. If you're expecting financial aid for the semester, that will go into your account if you've set it up. Um, about the Friday before classes. So this year it will be January 5th, okay? You'll also see here on the screen, there are a few dates with no classes. So MLK Junior Day is in January. Um, we have spring break in March. And then I think, yeah, I think that's about it for the spring. Um, you'll see there are some different course registration periods, depending if you're trying to take classes in the summer or just in the autumn. Um, last day of classes is April 22nd and final exams are shortly after that, the 24th to the 30th, depending on what your um, class requires. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of resources that we've identified um, as really great options for you coming into a new university, or maybe you had something similar like this at your old school that we wanna make sure we highlight as you um, get used to the Columbus campus and used to Ohio State. So tutoring the Dennis Learning Center, um, I'll, I'll lump it together, but when you think about how to access tutoring, how to access some of these services at Ohio State, one of the great things is we're a large institution and we have a lot of resources that are available, but sometimes students don't know how to access those resources because we are so big and because there are different options. Um, so anything you can do proactively to learn about this, to know how to access, how to set up appointments is going to help your transition. Um, so our Dennis Learning Center is really great because um, you can meet with an individualized appointment, kind of going through anything that you might need help with specifically to your own learning. Um, so maybe that is managing your time, overcoming procrastination, reducing test anxiety, 
um, note-taking skills. So you can meet with an academic coach through the DLC Dennis Learning Center um, here at Ohio State. So make sure you look into that. And then tutoring um, kind of looks different at Ohio State. So there are a few different options. You'll see on the screen, CSTW. So that is, let's see if I can get the acronym right. Uh, the, where did it go? The writing? Yeah, MassSats Learning Center. So that's, oh, that's the MSLC. Um, the one previously is our writing center. Um, so our writing center will help you obviously with, with writing papers, maybe trying to organize your paper, creating the structure, making sure that you're following the topic, um, proofreading, editing, those types of things. So that's going to be our writing center. And then our math statistics learning center is for math and statistics, but also other math um, subjects as well. But the way that you make appointments for those might look differently, right? So again, just looking into resources, go on Ohio State's website, um, just see what you can find and see what you can understand and make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. One thing I'll say for tutoring, um, you know, we have these centers and, and kind of these like broad topic areas to support you, but also unique to your college, there will probably be some tutoring options there too. So keep an ear out, do some research, make sure that you're set up well for this semester. One place you might check out in that academic, um, you know, studying and, and being prepared are the university libraries. Again, here at Ohio State, we have over 12 different libraries. Oh, yeah, more than a dozen. Um, so it's all across campus. The one that you'll see online is our Thompson Library. That is um, on the Oval. So that's like one of our main libraries. Um, we have li a library that's open 24-7. I know when I was in school, I had to get out of my room in order to actually get anything done. So again, looking at where the libraries are located and which one's right for you is super helpful. Their website is library.osu.edu. They also have a ton of online resources um, helping you learn how to research, how to utilize the book catalog um, for your classes, for your papers. Buckeye Careers, again, is a really great opportunity, especially if you're transferring in maybe as a junior or looking for um, an internship, some opportunities after graduation, you will want to check out Buckeye Careers. Um, so again, kind of unique to Ohio State, we have the office called Buckeye Careers. So if you're looking for some general support for resume writing, cover letter writing, interview techniques, you can meet with a career counselor through Buckeye Careers. Um, they do workshops and programs throughout the year to make sure that you are career ready. And then there's two other important resources. Um, each college and department will have a career services office. Um, so if you're in the College of Engineering, then they'll have somebody that is kind of um, more experienced and skilled in finding an internship that meets whatever you're looking for within engineering. Um, and then also, you may have had this at your previous institution, but we have a, an online job search platform called Handshake, like you're giving a handshake. Um, so handshake.osu.edu. So not only is this going to help you find on-campus jobs, but also summer internships. Um, there's also employers seeking students after they graduate. Um, so you can log in with your OSU credentials, create a profile um, as a potential employee, and then all those employers um, can see your profile and you can search theirs and stuff. So that is a really great um, online tool called Handshake. Health and wellness here at Ohio State. Um, I'll, I'll label it kind of as our wellness umbrella, right? But there are a few different services I want to make sure I can clarify with you. So student health services are health and wellness. So that's going to be um, where you go for your, your health concern. So if you're starting to get sick, where you would go kind of as your doctor's office on campus, that's student health services. Um, so diagnostic preventative care, for your physical health and wellness. There's a pharmacy if you need to get your script filled and they can make referrals out to a provider in the community if your needs extend beyond what they can do here on campus. Now the Student Wellness Center on the other hand is concerned with the holistic well-being of our students. So they're very proactive in their outreach programming. They offer presentations and workshops to help students understand the 10 dimensions of wellness and how they fit and contribute to your success at Ohio State. So they might have programs specific to emotional wellness, financial wellness, um, again, kind of looking at that broad dimensional wellness. And then our counseling and consultation services, our counseling center on campus, they're concerned with your mental health and wellness. So um, you can go see a therapist one-on-one -on -one or maybe take um, 
advantage of, of the group counseling. They also have a ton of resources online. Um, they do workshops. And so again, if you need a provider that's maybe beyond what they can offer here, they're happy to connect you with somebody in the um, Columbus off-campus area as well. Okay, just quickly public safety. So again, we are a large institution. We are in a large city. Maybe this is a first time for you. Um, and so we know that that maybe carries risks that other towns don't have. So I just wanna put this up here. Please take a look at our Department of Public Safety website, dps.osu.edu. Um, so we have a fully certified public safety department on campus. Their website has a number of safety tips for students, including bicycle safety, um, other tips to keep you safe. And um, we wanna make sure that you are aware of that. What you'll see on the screen is a picture of our oval and you may have had this at other institutions, but we have like that emergency blue light system where you can be connected with a dispatcher um, by hitting the light on that. So um, again, you'll learn a lot more on their website, but I wanna make sure you're aware of that. Buckeye Link, I talked about it briefly, but Buckeye Link is Ohio State's version of what may have been separated as other offices on your other schools. So this is going to be the University Registrar Financial Aid Bursar. What does that mean? So anything about um, registering for classes, questions about your schedule, classes not showing up that should have been, um, why isn't my financial aid on there? I have questions about my financial aid. Who do I talk to? Um, Bursar, how am I supposed to be paying this bill? What happens if there's late fees or payments? How do I set up a payment? Again, all of this is grouped at Ohio State under Buckeye Link. Um, so you can access Buckeye Link in a few different ways, and you may have already done this as part of your uh, admissions experience. The most common way is through that Buckeye Link web portal. So if you don't have it saved, please save it now. And hear me say this, we just had an update with Buckeye Link a few weeks ago. So when we did orientation last week, there were a lot of people with um, some issues accessing it. It should be buckeyelink.osu.edu. If that is not working, then I would remind you, um, if you log into osu.edu, like our main website, the top right-hand corner should have a shortcut to Buckeye Link, okay? But regardless, when you find Buckeye Link, you are going to want to favorite it because you will be using it all of the time. Um, so that Buckeye link will have your individual portal. It'll have your classes, your financial aid information, your to-do items. Um, so that'll be a really, really important kind of student account to continue to check. Um, in addition to looking at that online, you can also reach out to them, I think, via chat when you log into their page. And what you see on the screen is a picture of a building. Um, and this is actually the building that I'm in right now. Um, this is at the corner of Lane and Tuttle Park Place. Um, and the first floor of this building is Buckeye Link. So when you walk in, there'll be like different kiosks. You can log in on a computer. Your name will pop up on the screen. It's very like BMV vibes and they'll call you and you can walk up. It's not as difficult as trying to get your license or anything. So don't be alarmed, um, but you can't miss it. It's on the first floor of that um, student academic services building. They can also be reached by mail and over the phone. Um, if you're emailing and you have not gotten a response, please just call. I know nobody wants to call anybody anymore. It's the fastest way to get a hold of somebody. Um, so all of that to say, be familiar with Buckeye Link. Okay, I'm almost done, I promise. So academic advising. Um, again, we've talked about academic, academic advisors, but you should be aware of who yours is. You should be reaching out to them or connecting with them regularly. Please hear me say this, transfer students, um, you're not going to be required necessarily to meet with your academic advisor after this week, but you will, will, will want to slash should be checking to make sure you're on track to graduate, that your credits transferred. Um, this means that the better relationship you have with your academic advisor, the easier it's going to be for you to reach out, to ask questions, to make appointments. Um, your advisors have been around. They know the people in, in different offices all across campus. They know the programs. They know how to guide you um, to graduation. That's our goal, right? So make sure that you know who your academic advisor is. Um, their website is advising.osu.edu. Okay, I will pause here. I see our next presenter is here, so that's great. Um, so again, this is a good time if you have theme, broad-based questions, you're going to put it in the Q&A. If you have personal 
questions that are using your information, um, asking questions just specific to you, you're going to put that in the chat. And I see um, some folks are doing it that, so it's great. We do have a small team today, so please be patient if you're um, having any questions. Again, you are emailing orientation at osu.edu if you are needing help with your academic advisors. So all that to say, Susan, I am not seeing too many questions here, so we will keep the ball rolling. Um, and students, before Susan takes over, I'm going to pause and send out a poll. So we'll do this at the beginning of each of these sections today so we can kind of understand where are your priorities. Um, I guess I already launched it. Uh, where where are your priorities as we look at transportation and traffic management? Okay, so now that should be on your screen. Um, what, if there is anything, is your biggest concern about navigating Ohio State and Columbus? Biking on, around campus, campus bus service, city bus service, paratransit, parking passes, or no concerns, I've got this. I'll give you just a few minutes here. I like seeing all the answers kind of rolling. I'm like, yep, this sounds about right. No surprises. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you to the 92% that it, um, are hanging in with us and participating. Um, so you can see on your screen, parking passes. Um, we have quite a few folks that are feeling pretty confident. And Susan will definitely speak to all of the concerns, including that campus bus service here. So um, Susan, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Didi. Good morning, Buckeyes. My name is Susan Boyarski Markle, and I work for Transportation and Traffic Management. Our department uh, deals with all the different transportations for options for campus. For example, the campus area bus service, or CAPS for short, paratransit, charter bus, um, the shared mobility device program, and biking on campus. I encourage you to reach out to the department if you have any questions about transportation options. We're always here to help. If you're going to be using the cab service on campus, I'd recommend you follow us on Twitter. Uh, we will put all of our updates on our website, but if there's an immediate need for a bus change, say there's an accident on campus and we have to reroute our buses, we will post that quickly on Twitter. So, and I just also wanted to qualify that all the information I talk about here is on our website. So uh, don't worry about uh, scrolling through this or writing this down. We can find it on our website later. Um, the campus area bus service is free to ride. You can hop on and hop off at any stop. You don't need your buck ID to ride the campus area bus service. Now you will for uh, the CODA, which is the city bus service. And I'll go over that here in just a second. We are on the Ohio State mobile app. So if you haven't downloaded, that's a great resource for all Ohio State things. You will be able to find real-time bus information. So you can actually pull up the app, select what routes or all the routes that you would like to follow on campus and see where the buses are on campus at any time. That way you'll know when it's coming to your bus stop. For the uh, campus map here, I just wanted to give you an overview of what our current campus map is and how we cover pretty much the entire campus and getting around on the cab service. So you can see the expanse of the bus service here. Just for some reference points, that pink shaded area on the map is the Buckeye lot, which a lot of commuters park in. And that light blue area is the Kinnear overnight lot, which a lot of upperclassmen park if they're residence hall students and storing their vehicle on campus. Going to hit a few of the popular bus uh, routes for students. One is the Buckeye Express. Now, it does serve our Buckeye commuter parking lot. Um, this route provides service to the north and east sides of campus, and it's pretty frequent. It comes every seven minutes up until 6 p.m., and then every 15 minutes afterwards. So you can see you can get around campus on the north and east side with our Buckeye Express. On the campus loop south, it also serves the Buckeye parking lot. It goes counterclockwise direction, so it goes the opposite direction of our other bus routes on campus, so it'll also serve, in addition to the north and east sides, the medical center and the south campus area. It'll hit those areas first, so depending on where you're going on campus, you could choose what route that you're going to. Um, and just another note that you don't have to ride it just to go out to the Buckeye lot. You can use it as a circulator or getting around campus itself. This route operates every 15 minutes from 7 to 6 and then afterwards every 30 minutes. One more route to hit is the campus connector. So if you're going out to our west campus area, including Kinnear Road, this is a good route for you. It serves that west campus area, the Carmont, 
Carmack and overnight parking lots. Also the ag uh, agricultural campus area. That one goes around and actually comes back the same way due to some um, construction that's on campus. So again, it'll serve the north, east and south sides of campus. A few rider tips for you when you're riding a bus. Don't rush on the bus when the doors open. Most of the time there'll be passengers that are exiting the bus. So if you'll just stop, wait, let them get off the bus and then enter the bus, it allows for faster loading and unloading. For safety reasons, we're not able to stop anywhere but bus stops. So don't try to flag a bus down. Unfortunately, they're not gonna be able to stop for you unless they're at a bus stop. And you don't need to press any of the stop bars or pull any of the stop cords. That bus is gonna stop at all uh, bus stops on that route. For our on-demand service, um, this is a service that does a point-to-point -point type service. It's not a route service. We have a daytime and an overnight service. The daytime goes from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And it's, it's kind of a limited service, and I'll go over that here in just a moment. And then we have an overnight service from 9 p.m. until 7 a.m. To use the service, you'll need to download the TripShop app. And that information is here on the screen, but it's also on our website. And you can do real-time tracking. So in addition to scheduling a ride with that real-time, with, with the TripShop app, you can actually see the, the shuttle service and where it is. And this is available both on weekdays and weekends. For our daytime service, um, it goes from four different central area stops, which is the RPAC, Midtower, Stillman, and Doan Hall. Those are the stops that you can see on the screen in red. And then it can travel to any of those areas that are in black, which are west of Olentangy River Road. So this, the, the, for this service, it actually goes to the places where a lot of times our route service doesn't go. So you can go from the red to the black stops, the black to the red stops, or the black to the black stops during the day. For our overnight service from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., it opens up and it covers the entire campus area. So it's not limited to, to just those stops that you saw there. It'll provide service between different buildings on campus or even the remote parking lots. So for example, if you have a class in Denny Hall and you parked in the Carmack 2 lot, you would pull up the TripShop app, say you're going from Denny Hall, and it would tell you the southwest corner of the building is where you need to meet the shuttle service, and that you're going to Carmack 2, and it'll be dropping you off at the Carmack 2 bus stop. So you can schedule all that information right there on the TripShop app. For our paratransit service, so this is a door-to-door uh, -door transportation service for students that have either temporary um, or permanent disabilities. So, for example, if you unfortunately are on crutches for a period of time and you need this service, you can schedule with our office and they will take you from one class to the next and get you around campus for the day. So if this service can assist you, I encourage you to reach out to them. The information is here on the screen, but you can, again, also get that on our website. Another popular service here for campus that students use is the Lift Ride Smart, Lift Ride Smart program, excuse me. Um, it offers students a discounted rate um, inside the university service area from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So you'd be scheduling a lift ride within that area and Ohio State would contribute $4 of that uh, ride per ride to pay for that service. The rider would then pay for the difference, <clears throat> excuse me. So you should be getting an email invite um, explaining how to sign up for that service, but you can also just download the Lyft app and connect your Ohio State email account to it to receive that discount. I mentioned CODA a few minutes ago. That's the Central Ohio Transit Authority, and it provides transportation all around the Columbus area. So it's a great option if you want to go downtown. They have an online route planner, so you can put your starting destination and your ending destination in, and it will tell you how, what route or routes you need to get there. You already pay $13.50 per semester as a CODA fee, so it's already included in there. So when you go to ride, it's actually free to ride at that time. So what you need to do is take your buck ID and swipe it when you get on the bus, and it just validates that you need to ride. It will not take any money off that. So just uh, keep CODA in mind and reach out to CODA if you have any questions about their service. One other quick thing to mention here is that, again, we have shared mobility options of scooters and bicycles here on campus for uh, temporary riding. So you, uh, we have Lime, Bird, Spin, and Lyft if you're interested in using any of those to get around campus. Just one thing that I'd like to note that if you're parking a scooter on campus, please either use a scooter parking box or park next to a bike rack. Please keep all pedestrian and disability access ways open. 
Many students decide to ride a bike on campus. It's a very popular option. Just want to sh share some important tips for you. First and foremost, please always secure your lock and lock your bike to a bike rack. Do not lock it to anything else and make sure you lock your bike. Um, there are a limited number of bike lockers available on campus. Our office, our office does um, offer those as well. So if you're interested in running one of those, you can just reach out to our office. The university participates in the City of Columbus Bug a Bike program, so you can register online and the city will send you a free RFID tag to attach to your bike. That way, if the bike goes missing um, and it's located and they scan that RFID chip and they find it, it's for you, they will reach out to you and let you know that you can pick up your bicycle. Safety first, so if you're riding around campus, please wear a helmet. Always be visible and predictable when, when riding. Wear bright colors, especially if you're riding after dark. If you need some repairs to your bicycle when you're here on campus, we have the Buckeye Bike Hub that's available at the RPAC. You can either check out a tool by using your Buck ID and they'll let you work on your bicycle yourself or you can have them repair your bicycle. And then one other thing to note, if you leave campus for a semester and you're gone, please make sure you take your bicycle with you. We do tag bicycles that have been left um, as when we consider possibly abandoned. We've got to keep those bike racks available for those that are actively biking on campus. So please just take your bicycle with you when you're not here biking on campus. A few mobility safety tips. Campus is always a very busy place. There's a lot of people moving around. Make sure you're always aware of your surroundings. Wear a helmet when you're riding a bicycle or a scooter. When you're riding a scooter, do a pre-ride safety check. Make sure the brakes are working before you use it. And again, I want to stress one more time, if you're running a scooter or a bicycle or parking your bicycle, please do not block any disability access ramps or do not park your scooter in front of the doors. Uh, we got to keep all of those access ways open and available for pedestrians. A great way to keep connected to major events here on campus is the OSU Go uh, service alert. They will text you when they have major events on campus, such as concerts or the part, the football games that are occurring. It'll let you know when there's big events or a construction that will impact major routes. You'll know before you come to campus. So if you're interested in this service, you can do a screenshot here, or again, this is on our website to sign up for this service. A little plug here, if you're looking for a student job, we're hiring um, our campus area bus service um, drivers. Um, you can make up to $16 an hour as a student bus driver. We do paid flexible scheduling um, and we work with your class schedule. So if you're interested, check out our website to uh, look at that information. And finally, what I know many of you are, are waiting for is that our vendor campus park operates the parking here on campus. If you're going to have a vehicle on campus, you need to either have a parking permit or you need to park in a pay facility, such as a meter or a parking garage. If you don't know what type of parking permit to get, Campus Park offers a parking permit per, uh, comparison tool. So you can put in, um, you know, who is the permit for? So you put that down to that you're a student and your rank, uh, rank one, two, three, and four. So that depends on the number of credit hours that you have. And you can see what type of parking permits you are available to purchase. Uh, permits can be purchased online. So their website there is osu.campuspark, and that's park with a c.com. They have great resources on that, and I encourage you to reach out to Campus Park if you have any questions about parking. Speaking of questions, I'm open to any questions that anybody has right now. Thanks, Susan. And students, I'll leave this here. Um, so go ahead and take a screenshot if you need to. But again, um, you do need to purchase a parking pass. The type of pass that you purchase depends on what your student eligibility is, which you will see when you log in with your Ohio State account, and you'll want to compare um, the parking options, the prices, where those options get you to park on campus and compare them with your class schedule. So you might just want to check it out and then go back into it later this week when you're registered for classes. Um, so somebody just answered or asked if there's a certain time to purchase. No, there's no time frame. So you purchase um, whatever point in time prior to the semester makes sense for you. And Susan, there was a question um, is trip shot free to use like cabs? Absolutely. Yes. Great. Okay. Let me check this. Um, somebody asked what the cheapest parking option is. It really just depends on what is available in your profile. Every student's profile looks different. So yep. and just um, again, the more remote the parking is, the cheaper it is. So True. if you need to ride a bus to it, you're going to get a cheaper parking option. 
Yeah. And you just need to make sure you take that into account when you're trying to get to class on time. So, um, so again, this is Susan is great in presenting this. She, she, this is not her, her thing. So, um, as far as we do outsource to this company, this company is called campus park. So follow up with campus park. If you were looking for parking, um, questions. Okay. So, um, Susan, I think, I think we're good. And so some of our presenters today will be able to hang out and answer questions. If they're not available, we will make sure that you get connected with them. So, um, thank you, Susan. Okay. So as we move into, um, our conversations about housing, um, specifically off-campus housing, I want to see kind of where you are with your housing plans for next year. Um, so you will see a poll up on your screen. Do you know where you're living? Are you living off campus? Are you waiting to hear if you're living on campus? And Alyssa, I see you standing by, awesome. So we'll give just a second here, trying to beat that 92% participation, <laughs> we'll see. Oh, so close. Okay, I'm gonna end it at 90, so close, maybe next time. Okay, so um, I think you can see on your screen right now, a majority of folks are living off campus, but already know where. Um, if you are a student that is still waiting to hear about residence halls, you need to follow up at housing at osu.edu. I personally would just Google housing at Ohio State and call them because that's going to be a faster answer. And please listen to what Alyssa has to say about off-campus housing options. Um, if you are one of the students that said they're living off campus, but not sure. Again, Alyssa is going to have great um, information about how Ohio State can help you select and um, take advantage of the off-campus housing options. So go ahead, Alyssa. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Like Dee Dee said, my name is Alyssa Canella. I'm with the Willie J. Young Senior Off-Campus and Computer Student Engagement Office. On your screen, you'll see our information. We are located in the Ohio Union on the third floor across from the Buck ID office. Um, we also have lots of other resources up on the third floor that I'll talk about in just a minute. So make sure you come and explore. Our phone number is on the screen. If you wanna give us a call, we do consultations. We can help you navigate the search process, um, answer any questions, connect you with different resources whatever you may need, we're here for you. Um, our website is also there as well as our email. Most of the information that we're gonna go through today can be found on our website. So if you miss something, if you have another question, you can check out our website. It is full of good info. And then lastly, you'll see our Instagram handle. I would highly recommend giving us a follow. Not only are we gonna post about different fun upcoming events, we have a free food truck event on Friday, but we'll also post important reminders for students living off campus, like street sweeping is happening. Make sure you move your car so it doesn't get toad, um, things like that. So all of the resources available to you right here. Make sure you check them out. Okay, we offer a wide variety of resources. Like I've mentioned, um, some of our in-person events and resources are going to be roommate fairs. So if you find yourself in need of a roommate or maybe you and your roommate need an additional person, we host these all throughout each semester. So our spring dates will be coming soon. So keep an eye out on our social media as well as our website for those dates if you know you'll be looking for a roommate. We host two off-campus living expos each year. So our fall one was this past October and the spring one is coming up in March. That's gonna be for students who are living off campus to plan what else you need to do. So once you sign a lease, what else? What comes next? Um, so thinking about utilities, different city resources will all be available to you. I'll also say at the fall expo, I walked away with three sweatshirts. So there's a ton of free giveaways at these events. So make sure you stop by. Next, I mentioned that we do offer consultations. So if you find yourself just like, I'm not really sure what to do, I need some help, we will sit down with you um, and talk about your, your specific needs and what may work for you. Like I mentioned, we have the food truck event coming up on Friday. So we host lots of different community events. Our community ambassadors host initiatives all throughout the semester that are all geared at building community with off-campus students. So you'll stay in touch with us through social media and our block newsletter. 
online, you're going to find our housing search. So if you are one of those people that are still looking for off-campus housing, we'll talk about the um, off-campus housing search, but that is where I kind of call it like the Zillow of Ohio State. So you can put in your um, rent that you can spend, how many bedrooms you need, where you want it to be located, and it'll spit out a whole bunch of different opportunities for you. We also have the roommate and sublet ad search on our uh, website as well. So this is where you can either post a roommate ad or a sublet ad, or you can peruse them. There's actually a um, communication feature built right into the website as well. So you don't have to share like your personal contact information or anything. And that search feature is just for Ohio State students. So you'll log in with your Ohio State credentials and know that you are talking to other Ohio State students. Lastly, we have a whole bunch of virtual guides available on our website. So the off-campus living guide is for any student who is living off campus, looking for more resources, more information, um, lots of lots of good information in there. If you are somebody who is commuting to campus, there's a commuting 101 guide for you. Um, we also have the graduate professional student living guide as well as the USG renters guide. The USG renters guide is really cool because they're actually able to ask your fellow students about their experiences living off campus. So they're able to host ratings and lots of insight information for you on that guide. I do want to mention Student Legal Services. They are a great partner of ours. They are located right off of campus on East 11th Avenue. Their website is on your screen right now. You can find their phone number on their website as well. One cool tip is that you can actually text them. Um, so if you have a quick question or you're looking for something on their website, you can send them a quick message. Student Legal is actually a nonprofit law office just for Ohio State students. They will um, represent students, they have educational resources and other resources for student renters. Um, when you pay your fees at the beginning of the semester, you pay a $40 legal fee and that will cover any service that you utilize from Student Legal Services. One way that you may use them is from a lease review. So if even if you have already signed a lease, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting it reviewed by Student Legal Services. They will sit down with you. They'll go through the lease. They'll point out any important clauses to understand. Um, they'll also point out your responsibilities as well as the responsibilities of your landlord so that you can be an educated customer and hold your landlord responsible as well. They help with landlord or tenant issues if you have any, um, and they'll also represent students in a wide variety of ways. So like I said, you pay that $40 legal fee, please take advantage of their services. Next, we have our block, which is our Buckeyes Living Off Campus. New this year, it's actually a newsletter. So um, if you look at that link on your screen or you can find it on our website, you can sign up for the block newsletter. This is going to be full of good information um, condensed into one place for you. So information about upcoming street sweeping, upcoming events, um, different reminders. Like right now, we're getting ready to send one out about how to prepare your home to leave for winter or break. So make sure that you sign up for this block newsletter so that you can stay connected with campus and our office. Next, if you are commuting to campus, even if you are living off campus and you just spend most of the day on campus, we have lots of resources, like I mentioned, up on the third floor of the Ohio Union. The first are our commuter lockers. You can sign up for those on the first day of every semester at 8 a.m. They do go quickly, so if you're interested in a locker, make sure you set your alarm and you stop by our office so you can pick up a lock. We also have the commuter kitchen located on the third floor of the Ohio Union. If you decide to bring your food to campus because you don't want to buy food um, or you're looking to heat up lunch, we have refrigerators, a microwave, a hot water spigot. There's a disposal. All you need to do is fill out the request for access and we will give you access on your Buck ID. Last, we have the commuter lounge, which is located again on the third floor of the Ohio Union. Lots of tables, chairs, a TV, really good space for studying in between classes, group meetings, or even just hanging out in between classes or whenever you're on campus. 
I also want to highlight some of the safety resources available through off-campus and commuter student engagement. We offer personal safety devices to students. Those are birdies. So they're a like a little rectangle that when you pull it, it makes a loud siren, flashes, a light. Um, students will carry those on their keys or on their backpacks. We have window and door alarms as well as light timers for students as well. So make sure you stop by and pick those up. They're totally free for students, um, especially when you're living off campus. Those window and door alarms and light timers are fantastic. I love them so much that I actually went and bought myself some um, because I think they're such a great resource to have. Next, lastly, like um, our colleagues on the call today, if you are looking for an on-campus job, we will start the hiring process in the spring for the next school year. So if you are looking for a job on campus that has a flexible schedule um, and you're looking to get out, plan events, host things, talk to people, get to know your fellow Buckeyes, really great opportunity for you. Um, and like I said, more information will be coming in the spring. Last, this is our information one more time. If you want to connect with us, um, expand upon any of the resources that I mentioned today. I know we kind of flew through it. There's a lot to take in. Um, so let us know how we can help you. And please feel free to connect with us. That's what we're here for. Are there any questions? Thank you, Alyssa. I don't see anything in the Q&A. We did have a question through chat and I'm curious to see what your answer is. We, I get a lot of questions about students wanting to connect with other students that are transferring, but I don't know of a way to suggest that to students other than like if they find a Facebook page, but do you know of anything? I just wanted to make sure. Um, I don't know of anything transfer student specific. Um, but I will say that some of our events are really good opportunities to connect with students. And you may stumble upon someone who is a transfer student. Um, we host commuter meetups too. So that could be an opportunity to connect with some students that may have also transferred. Yeah. And we can't share any information about student statuses due to privacy, federal privacy laws. And so we always encourage students, you know, to reach out to other folks if you know of them, but we don't typically like broadcast that information. So I just wanted to, to check with you because we had that question. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I always just tell students like, you know, I don't know. If yeah, I'll keep thinking. And if I, if I think of anything, I'll be sure to let you know. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we are going to head into our last segment here. I'm going to launch another quick poll. Um, so as you think about student life and engagement, I'm curious to know. Um, kind of where you um, were with your last institution, what are your interests, how can we help you again transition into the community, get engaged here as an Ohio State Buckeye um, starting in the spring. So you'll see that poll on your screen. Um, were you involved in a student organization? Are you looking um, or have you worked at, a, at an office on campus? Um, are you interested in attending campus events, participating in community service? Um, hopefully eating on campus, interested in eating on campus, and Columbus is lucky enough, Ohio State is situated, um, that we have a lot of walkable off-campus options as well. So um, Brooke will talk about all of that. So let me go ahead and end our poll here. So Brooke, you can see that a lot of students um, are interested in attending events, eating on campus, um, looking at student orgs kind of all over the board. So I know this is your forte, so I will let you get at it. All right, thank you. Thanks everyone for answering that quick question for us as well. It's helpful context to see kind of where our where our spread and where our interests lie. Um, my name is Brooke Olson. I use she, hers pronouns. Um, my role is assistant director for student organizations within student activities. Um, but I am gonna cover several kind of buckets of information today. We're gonna talk about involvement. Um, we're gonna talk about eating on campus. We're gonna talk about accessing things. And so we're gonna cover kind of a potpourri of things today. Um, but as the, as a student involvement person at heart, I'm happy to kind of talk us through some of these things with student involvement specifically as well. But um, to kind of give us some bigger picture concept of where we're starting here, um, the Office of Student Life is um, comprised of more than 40 different departments. And so um, our experience, um, our, our role is to really help your experience on campus, um, especially outside the classroom, be 
really enriching and meaningful um, and to make sure that you have that support that you need. And so several of the units that you've already heard from or the resources that have been talked about today have come from um, a student life unit of some kind. Um, and there are far more than the ones here represented on the screen, but just wanted you to have kind of a general understanding of um, what our structure is really looking like and, and what student life really is all about. So talking about involvement kind of in our first chunk here, um, wanting to kind of talk through um, the, the myth around time of getting involved first. Before we dive into specific areas of involvement, um, sometimes we do hear that people say, you know, oh, you know, their campus has so much going on. I'm going to have lots of hats to wear while I'm there, and I don't know how I'm going to fit um, getting involved into my schedule. So just wanted you to have an idea of what that might look like. So we're going to just kind of walk through a fictional Joe Buckeye student. Um, but starting off here with our basic needs, we're going to look at uh, sleeping, um, you know, hopefully six to eight hours is a standard for you, making sure that you have that time every night to get the rest you need. We're going to plug in our hours of eating, want to make sure that we have these three times a day to pick up a meal. Um, we'll talk about food later on here. You're also a student. That's kind of your primary purpose here. Um, and so making sure that we have our course load booked in here. 12 to 18 is a standard full-time course load for a student. So 15 credit hours is very much um, kind of average. And then we're going to block in our time for studying. Um, they, the recommendation is two hours for every hour in the classroom. Um, so if you're taking 15 credit hours, that's around 30 hours a week to study and do your homework. Um, and as someone who's coming from, you know, a student from uh, being another student at another institution, you do have um, probably some, some backbone of, of study time and things that you need. But I will say that it is helpful to kind of have that time blocked in, um, especially when it comes to midterms and finals, you're going to be thanking past you for, for blocking that time into your schedule. Um, working on campus is a great opportunity. Um, you know, being in the city of Columbus has a lot of opportunity in and of itself just to work and network and intern. Um, I will say, though, just a special shout out to on-campus employment specifically because, um, you know, your supervisors, if you have an on-campus role, are going to be um, really attuned to leadership development. They're going to know that you're a student first. They're going to be flexible and able to work with you based on the things that you have going on in your life as a student. Um, and so that is a really great perk of working on campus, as well as the fact that it is kind of an involvement opportunity in and of itself because you get to connect with people on campus um, within, you know, campus departments and things like that. So um, 10 hours a week is pretty standard uh, hours of work for someone who has an on-campus role. Um, and then five hours of travel time. We did hear um, from Susan that there's a lot of different ways to get around campus, get to campus. And so if you are busing or scootering or walking, driving, um, we're going to plop in that travel time during your standard uh, weekly hours that you might have classes. And then we have free time. And this is not, um, you know, our, our student involvement time. We're still holding off for that. This is the time that really makes you feel like you. So that could be things like, you know, your meal prepping or you're going to the gym or you're catching up with your family um, or you're exploring the city of Columbus. Um, those kinds of things that kind of fill up your cup as a human being. So um, making sure you have plenty of time for that. And then look at the look at here, uh, lo and behold, we have a whopping beautiful 10 hours a week to get involved. And that's plenty of time to find um, something meaningful or multiple things that are meaningful to you. So wanted you to have that kind of touch point of schedule reference. Um, in terms of involvement, what does it look like? It look like a lot of different things. Um, so being involved, I will say, is really a part of the campus culture at OSU. And so the um, majority of students are involved in something. Um, and as someone who's going to, you know, focus much on student organizations, because my role is related to student orgs, I certainly don't want to um, miss out on mentioning that there are other ways outside of student organizations to get involved. We have on-campus employment, like I said, community service, rock sports, campus events. We're going to talk about those too. But um, beyond that, there's religious and spiritual opportunities, cultural appreciation, fraternity and sororities. And many of these things might intersect within some sort of, you know, student organization format, but there are lots of different um, offices on campus and kind of standalone opportunities as well all that focus um, closer in on things like community service um, or civic engagement, for example, as well. But like I said, um, student organization. So um, the directory is going to be a really amazing opportunity for you to kind of peruse. Um, and so making sure that you know that there is um, kind of a, a database of all of our registered student organizations at, at Ohio State. So um, go.osu.edu slash find a student org is going to be where you find this database. Um, and you're going to be able to utilize this to type in keywords. So it might be something like your major. Uh, maybe you're in engineering, for example. You're going to plug in engineering as a keyword. Or maybe a hobby. Um, so maybe you are into unicycling, for example, or want to learn. So there are a lot of different ways 
ways for you to utilize the directory. There's also some really handy um, advanced search features. There's a tab drop down where you can filter by a type of organization. So for those of you who are interested in service, for example, that could be a filter that you apply to see, okay, what, what are all of the organizations that have some sort of component um, of service within their membership? And so that could be a good way to, to keep an eye out for um, opportunities for um, hitting the ground running in the spring. And related to the spring and, and kind of getting started um, with involvement and student organization connections, um, the involvement fair in January is January 17th and 18th. So we do have a student involvement fair actually twice a year at the beginning of fall and the beginning of spring. Um, you can expect to experience the very large campus event. Um, the fall involvement fair is the one that's photographed on, this, on the screen here. Naturally, it is out on the oval. It's a big green space. There's lots of tables and opportunities, but the weather is warm for that. And so in the spring, um, we have this event inside the Ohio Union. So we kind of take over the building um, and there are hundreds still of organizations that we bring in um, to talk to you. And so these groups are generally recruiting students um, into their membership. And so there's going to be lots of opportunities, also lots of campus departments. So if you're looking for a student employment opportunity, um, that's another great way to utilize that event. Um, but it will be 17th and 18th for the spring. Um, that'll make it a two-day event specifically because it's a smaller venue than, than the Oval. We can kind of break it into two days, um, but that's a Wednesday and Thursday of the second week of class. Okay, so a lot of you were interested in campus events, which is great to see. And so um, OUAB or the Ohio Union Activities Board is our campus programming board. Um, so they are responsible for bringing in talent to campus that might um, cover different domains of interest like entertainment or um, lectures and, and, and people who are specialists in what they do and experts in what they do. There might be um, you know, authors or celebrities that they can bring in from your favorite TV show. Um, like Dan Levy, he came to campus and that was really amazing. So um, their role is to bring new and interesting um, opportunities to campus that are free for students. Um, and they are um, there, there are specialization options for graduate professional students, undergraduate students, um, and they are all year round. There's hundreds of events. So the best way to kind of keep in touch with what's going on with OUAB is following them at OUAB. Um, that is often how they will release new information about a surprise concert that's coming up um, or tickets that are that are going to be opening up to snag. Um, and so making sure that you have um, your eye out for those amazing opportunities coming up. And we're not done talking about events on campus. So OUAB, like I said, plans new events, um, whereas signature events are campus events that are more traditional in nature. They're going to be annual things that you can pretty much expect to enjoy from year to year. So OUAB is going to be bringing in different things all the time, um, keeping up with the trends and what's interesting to people and what's relevant right now. And signature events are going to be more about that community building, um, that tradition of being an Ohio State student. And so signature events are often um, collaborations between different academic or um, student life units and student organizations even. Um, but they are large scale events. They need to host at least a thousand students um, in order to qualify as a SIG event. Um, but they are sprinkled throughout the year. Um, some of the, the you know, big faves are on the screen now. Um, for example, I love Taste of OSU. That's an amazing opportunity where um, you can sample a lot of different cultural cuisines and there's performances. Um, and it's just a really big, um, wonderful opportunity to meet other students as well. Um, but there is also African American Heritage Festival. So Welcome Week is a part of that as well. All of those um, fun festivities of um, coming back to campus every year. And so a whole different assortment there, but another way to experience campus events in a way that's um, more of a tradition. Okay, so um, we talked about on-campus things. So OUAB and signature events are generally gonna be happening right on our campus. Um, but being in the city of Columbus is an amazing um, location for us because there is so much to experience outside of the physical borders of campus as well. And so the discount tickets program, it's also called DTIX. Um, you can follow them on social media. Um, DTIX.osu.edu is also their, um, their website. But discount tickets is going to be a way for you to experience off-campus opportunities at a big discount just because you're an Ohio State student. So DTEX will often, um, will usually offer the tickets to these local opportunities at at least half off the public pricing. Um, and so um, as someone who also takes classes at the university, I'm a grad student, 
Um, I literally uh, Thursday, I'm going to go to a Columbus Blue Jackets game, for example, utilizing my discount ticket opportunity. And so um, our, our sports teams are amazing to, to keep up with locally. Um, there's also standard opportunities like movie tickets you can get for only $3 a piece to go experience movie at the Gateway Theater across the street from campus. Um, but there's also things that pop up around the year. So festivals or concerts even that come to Columbus. So um, keep your eye out for what's uh, offered on DTIX so that you can um, sign up to, to snag some tickets and explore Columbus. Okay, behold, um, the Ohio Union. So uh, this is a, a physical hub for all kinds of things that are going on on campus. I like to consider it a physical hub for involvement as well, uh, because there is so much happening. Um, there's, it's a campus venue. So Buckeye-thon or career fairs or Taste of OSU, like I said, is going to happen in this building. Um, there's also four different dining options in this building alone. There's the Center for Student Leadership and Service, which is where you'd find me and my team when we're in person. Um, student organization offices and lockers are there. You might be hosting your student org meetings in this building somewhere as well. Um, but it's also cozy. It's got, um, especially as the winter and weather creeps in here soon, you'll notice that there are um, fireplaces throughout the building that are just cozy to curl up in front of with your books or your studying material um, and sit in the rocking chairs, um, catch, a, catch a coffee break with a friend between class. So you're going to find your campus building it feels kind of like your home while you're physically here, um, but the union might be a really good place to start if you're looking for that. And um, don't forget to get a selfie with the Bronze Brutus, which is uh, in the main Great Hall when you walk in. Okay, so as just like a one-stop shop for kind of where you depart from here related to involvement, um, the Get Involved Guide is a great resource for you to peruse other areas involvement. Um, a bit more in depth than what we were able to cover today because I am kind of cruising through a bunch of different things. Um, so check out the guide, um, student orgs database, go to osu.edu slash find a student org, peruse that directory, follow OUAB. Um, I know that for example, um, you know, Susan said that they're hiring and I know that, you know, on-campus employment is a great opportunity. So make sure that you're um, logged into Handshake if you're looking for an on-campus job, handshake.osu.edu where that bulletin board for posting um, those positions are going to be located. Intramural sports, we didn't get to cover that, um, but recsports.osu.edu is going to be where you can find more information about our rec facilities, as well as the intramural sports opportunities. Even our sport clubs are going to be hosted there as well. Um, and then sororities and fraternities, they are also student organizations, but they do have um, extra kind of special emphasis on our campus through um, sorority and fraternity life office. So if you have questions about um, joining one of those organizations, there's a website to go and check out what that looks like um, and kind of the expectations of what it is to be a member in a sorority or fraternity on campus. Okay, so transitioning over to eating. So I've already kind of referenced that, that you know, for example, the Ohio Union has food in it, um, but there's food all over campus. And so I wanted to kind of showcase the variety of places to eat while you're while you're on campus and, and between classes and things like that. And so um, there are a lot of different ways to eat on campus, which I really appreciate. And I think that one of my favorite parts of this is that kind of no matter what your eating habits or your diet or your timeline is going to look like, um, there are options for you. And so there's going to be everything from kind of your traditions dining, which is going to feel more like a standard dining hall when you think of, you know, swiping in, um, you know, paying a very set amount, but all you can eat, stay in there. It's kind of its own little dining ecosystem, um, you know, grab food, grab seconds, grab thirds, um, and, you know, had, hang out in there for a little bit then go on your way. But there's a few different locations for traditions dining. Um, there's also grab and go options. So that's going to be very much like your cafe experiences. Um, but fast casual is going to kind of be uh, a good hybrid between this grab and go concept and like a traditional dining, because um, while it's not going to be something where you kind of have a, a set, you know, all you can eat menu, and it's not going to be something where it's only exclusively kind of pre-made items, um, fast casual is going to be something where you walk into the space, there is a menu, there's lots of different options, it might feel kind of like a market environment, uh, but you can order, you know, your customized meal. So if you want a burger with no onion on it, for example, you're going to be able to order that with, you know, your baked potato and all your ingredients that you want on your potato. Um, so lots of different ways to eat in that way. But we also have food trucks. Um, we have a convenience store. We have a full um, sit down 50 style diner in the union called Sloopy. So you should definitely check that out. But all to be said, lots of different ways to eat, no matter where you're located and, and what it is that you like to eat. 
Um, campus dining plan. So this is important, especially if you're living on campus. Um, please know that you are required to purchase a meal plan. So if you are living in a residence hall, um, that is something that you should expect to, um, you know, navigate and, and select a plan for. So dining.osu.edu is going to be where you can go for that. Um, but do know that if you are not, a, you know, a resident of the on-campus um, facilities, that you are still welcome to have a dining plan. There are many different types of dining plans to offer. And so if you are an off-campus or a commuter student, um, there are kind of supplemental ways ways to eat on campus and have those dining plans. Um, do know, though, that you don't have to have a dining plan to eat on campus. So um, most of our locations are going to also accept Buck ID cash, which is not your dining plan itself, um, but can also accept debit. Um, oftentimes, they can also accept a standard cash as well. And so know that you can still eat when you're on campus, regardless of the type of dining um, sort of plan or, or a method of payment that you have. Um, it is important to mention that Grubhub is tapped into our campus um, dining facilities. And so it's an app that you can download. You um, can associate it with your identity as an OSU student. Um, and that allows you to order pickup for um, or pick up or delivery even from on-campus locations. It's really, really handy. I specifically love to use it um, when I'm coming into campus and I want to get a latte and have it ready for me, kind of like your Starbucks pickup order. Um, you can use that for your on-campus um, cafes, for example, as many as well as many of the other facilities. Um, oh, one more thing here. Um, if you do have dietary needs, please do contact our um, kind of our uh, dietitian, excuse me, Kara. Um, so if you are someone who is concerned or has questions about, hey, you know, I have very specific um, parameters around what it is that I eat and I want to make sure that where I'm at on campus, I can have those options, um, please do reach out to them. Um, as a vegan on campus, I can say that it is very easy to eat on campus, um, at least with, with that type of a diet, but um, do know that that is something that you should definitely take advantage of if you want to make sure that you have that chance to talk through that with someone um, and, and have the info that you need to navigate eating. All right, last main chunk here um, is accessing things. So we covered throughout this entire presentation today, lots of different things and, and ways to um, get around on campus. And so the Buck ID is gonna be kind of that, that ticket that allows you to access most of the things that are associated to your student identity at the university. So that is gonna be how you ride the code of busing system. For example, you're just gonna simply swipe when you get on the bus. Um, it's not gonna charge you. It's simply just a part of your um, student fees, but it's associated with your Buck ID. And so you're going to want to make sure you have that if you want to get on the CODA system. It's also your library card. It's um, how your meal plan is going to be um, associated to you. It's going to swipe you into your residence hall. It's going to be how you show that you're a student when you're getting into an OUAB event or when you're picking up DTICs, for example, they're going to say, hey, can you have your Buck ID? Um, so make sure you have that on you um, pretty much at all times is what I'd recommend for you. Um, but know that you can pick this up. You have to schedule an appointment. Um, it's buckid.osu.edu is going to be where you can go to um, make sure that you have that um, chance to get that scheduled for you. Um, the physical location for the Buck ID office is on the third floor of the Ohio Union. And so when you go to have your appointment, that's where you'll go. Um, if you lose your Buck ID, you're so going to want to make sure you can replace it. Um, there are also off-campus facilities um, and vendors that utilize the Buck ID. So in addition to having it for your on-campus things, also know that there are hundreds of off-campus restaurants and stores um, that also utilize the Buck ID as a form of payment. So it's not going to take your meal plan, but there are ways to load money onto your Buck ID as a student. And so that is a form of payment that you can use at many, many off-campus and local opportunities um, to experience, you know, vendors or, or shops or things like that eating. Um, but you'll know, uh, you can peruse the list at, at the Buck ID website, but you can also often know that someone accepts Buck ID when they have a little Buck ID leaf or we accept Buck ID in the window. All right, kind of wrapping up here. Um, so we've talked about a lot of things, and I mentioned at the beginning that there are lots of different offices that kind of supplement your experience as a student on campus. And so we certainly did not get a chance to cover all of them. At the very least, we covered a few of them. Um, but know that you can browse the whole list of departments, including all their services and contact information on the Student Life website. So studentlife.osu.edu is where you can go as kind of a, a starting point for that. Um, and know that also you can go to the orientation page of this website as well. Um, let's see here. Next slide. There we go, studentlife.osu.edu slash orientation is going to be where you can go to kind of come back to some orientation related topics. So if you want to watch some videos um, or uh, kind of link directly to some of the things that we covered in today's presentation as well, 
that's going to be here. Um, and so it is a really great kind of way to circle back and make sure you're covering some of those bases. Um, one of my favorite videos on this website is one about student organizations as well. So uh, if you want to get an, intro an introduction to um, some of the campus organizations, um, that is a good highlight video as well. Um, but I did mention the Get Involved Guide earlier. Um, this QR code will take you to the guide as well. But Get Involved Guide is, like I said, that kind of digital booklet that's going to um, allow you to dive deeper into the different types of involvement. And so if you're curious about religious and spiritual opportunities and what that might look like, that is a really great place to go. Um, same with, you know, um, culture or um, community service, leadership development, those types of different areas are all um, kind of explored deeper in that guide. So check it out. Um, and then feel free to reach out if you have any more questions. Student Life is generally here to support you, um, but know that, you know, feel free to reach out to any of us. We can generally kind of network together and get you the help that you need. Um, but welcome to OSU. Go Bucks. Let me know what questions there are. Thanks, Brooke. Uh, I don't see any questions right now. So if you don't mind hanging out, students, if you have a question about Student Life, go ahead and throw that um, in the Q&A or the chat. I want to make sure we can get through the rest of our content, just a few quick slides, because I know people will have some academic advising appointments coming up here. So, um, so I'm going to pause here. Um, so as a reminder, here are some next steps when we're looking at what do you need to complete after today's session? Um, we went over information. If you cannot find your academic advisor information, you should be emailing orientation at osu.edu, asking questions about that. There are some checklist items on u.osu.edu slash transfer and buckeye.link.osu.edu. That Buckeye link, again, some of those items are very important to make sure that you're able to register for classes. So take a look at that. Also, if you're able to, please, please um, complete our program evaluation, go.osu.edu slash orientation eval. I'll also send this link out in the um, recording and reminders email I send out at the end of this week. This is to help us um, get feedback on orientation and figure out what information we need to be including to make sure your questions are answered. Um, and lastly, I wanted to make sure, again, as we're ending our session today, if you have questions or concerns, you know how to contact us. So again, we have our first year experience team, our orientation team um, that you can contact at orientation at osu.edu. Um, again, my name is Didi. I am the transfer specialist. I will be leaving this position at the end of December. Um, so you can reach out to me, cruise.375 until then, um, or you can continue to reach out to that orientation at osu.edu. Um, and then again, if you have any questions or maybe you have a lot of questions and you'd rather just connect with somebody one-on-one, um, -on -one, we can certainly do that myself or another member of our FYE team um, over Zoom. I wanted to do a quick plug. We are having a transfer welcome event. January 11th, that's the first Thursday of classes from 2.30 to 4.30 in the Ohio Union. So you'll get more information about that, but um, a great opportunity to actually connect with transfer students. So if you're looking to do that, um, first week of classes, you're already going to be on campus, free food, some swag, some resources. So make sure you look for information about that. Okay, so if you do not have questions for a panelist or for a presenter, then you are able to log off. Um, I am going to quickly go back to the Buck ID slide because I know that I'm anticipating some questions about that. Um, and Brooke is hanging out for just a few minutes. So if we have any kind of student life, student involvement questions, otherwise students, if you do not have any questions, you're free to log off. You've completed orientation um, as long as you know when your academic advising appointment is. So um, thank you for joining us today. We'll um, stick around to answer some questions. So again, if you're asking any questions about your personal information or your account, um, go ahead and put that in the chat. So if we have to get more personal information from you, we can do that in a private way. All right, Brooke, I do see a question about, I think it was answered, but maybe this would help other people. Do I need to make an appointment online to receive my Buck ID card? So maybe if you can just remind folks like, if you're just taking online classes, um, I know at one point in time they were like allowing students to submit photos, but I don't know if that's still a thing. Um, yes, I do believe if you're online only, the digital buck ID is um, in your OSU app. And so that is something that I don't think you have to necessarily set up like an in-person appointment for. Um, but if you do need your physical Buck ID to be printed, um, that is something that you should definitely set up your appointment for so that you can go in um, and, and get that. Um, and so that's kind of the, the point of those appointments, generally speaking. But um, they are uh, open 
like standard business hours um, throughout the day. And so they do have a phone number, which I can draw. 614-292-0400. There it is. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and students, again, this is an office at Ohio State. So if you just like Google it, or if you look at Ohio State's website, it should pop up. Um, but I understand it's a little bit confusing. So if you need to obtain a physical ID, um, which, you know, you can use for a variety of reasons, like Brooke highlighted, then you'll want to um, make that appointment. Now you don't necessarily need to do it before classes start um, if you're not going to be on campus or accessing resources. Um, and I just wanted to do a quick reminder that if you are only joining by phone today, please do email us at orientation at osu.edu with your phone number and your name today. Um, all right. Looking. Don't have any other open questions. So students, again, if you um, don't have any questions for our presenters or for our staff, you can go ahead and log off. You've completed orientation. Um, so Brooke, I, I think we're good to let you go and, and we'll reach out to you um, if we need anything. All right. Sounds great. Have a good Thank rest you of so the day. Much. Bye. All right. So students, again, if you are reaching out to our staff, if you're having questions answered, that's perfectly fine. Um, otherwise, you are free to go and you've completed our orientation. Just make sure you attend that academic advising appointment to schedule for classes. All right, I know we're getting some questions answered. Thank you, staff members. So students, if you already have your questions answered, then feel free to log off. Looks like we do still have a handful of students. So we'll give you a few more minutes um, to ask any questions before we go ahead and end the webinar today. If you have questions that you would like to ask via email, that information is up on the screen, orientation at osu.edu. Um, my email is cruz.375 at osu.edu as well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and end the webinar. So thank you all for attending and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.